Well, you see the line's still out here producing fur. Got another raccoon. The same set. We've caught two raccoons here now. A lot of people thought this set wouldn't hold, but it's plenty strong enough, believe me. This thing's not going anywhere. So, another day on the trap line for us. Back to the cabin we go. Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Suffer Alliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. When I thought this morning, you know, I did a little bit of stuff on the trap line yesterday and pretty uneventful. We got one coon out there that'll be in the beginning of this video. But I thought today while I was out walking on the line, I've been carrying uh, one of Malcolm's packs for the last couple days from Hidden Woodsman. And I've had one of his other packs exactly like this, except it was tan color for quite a while now. And it's a really nice, comfortable pack to wear. And he recently sent me one of his camouflage models with an improvement to the axe sleeve that we'll talk about in just a minute. And I wanted to just kind of show you guys this pack. It's not necessarily a review, although I will tell you it's a very comfortable pack and I would highly recommend it. It's really not a review. It's more of, hey, look at this pack and look what I've got inside of it type of thing. So I don't do very many videos like that. So I thought I'd do one today. So if you'll stay with me, we'll take a look at this pack. Okay, so let's talk about this thing, I guess, from the outside in maybe would be the best way to do that. And so you've got a really nice sturdy back panel on this thing with some really nice heavy duty straps. And what I like about, or one of the things I like about this pack is this chest buckle on the pack is not that standard small size buckle that you get when you buy most backpacks. This is actually the same size buckle that's used other places on the pack to hold the flap down and things like that on the back. So you get a full size buckle right there. He's got really, really nice padding in his straps and again, a really nice back pad back in the back. There is no waist strap on this thing, but you're not gonna load this thing up to the point where you need that anyway. I also like these tabs that he has here for tightening the straps down. The reason I like them, I haven't put it on this one yet, but there's a hole in here where you can put a piece of paracord for a thumb loop in there. So that when you get ready to take this pack off your back and you've got it tight, all you really have to do is grab that thumb loop and lift up on it, and this thing's going to slip through to come off your back very easily if you're wearing some thicker type of outer garment. I like that. It's got plenty of attachments on both sides for Molly. It's got a couple of attachments on the top flap as well. And it's got Molly straps on the bottom here where you could actually attach a bedroll or something like that if you chose to do so. It's got a large Velcro panel on the front flap. And I'm not a big fan of this Velcro morale patch type of thing. I did throw a Pathfinder patch on there. But what I like about it is I can put an ammo shell holder on there for 12 gauge so that when I'm out in the woods and I'm sitting beside a tree, I've got my selected ammo for my 12 gauge right at hand instead of having to dig through my pockets. And I do like that really well. Again, you got Molly on both sides of this thing to be able to attach what you want. What I've done on this one is I've put one of his saw bags on here from my other tan color pack. And I've got a silky saw in that. I've got a roll of duct tape on the outside and I've got to light my fire knife stuff down inside that molly as well that's not coming off it just gives me quick access to a secondary knife that's got a thinner blade on it than the garberg that i'm carrying if i need to do some finer tasks okay so getting to the inside of this bad boy for a minute here it's got flaps over the top of it that actually close up and lock down to actually close up the interior of the pack a little bit better for you it's got a sleeve on the front side to put an axe or a hatchet. And when I got the first, I guess, prototype, if you will, of this type pack from him that had the axe sleeve, that was a tan color one, and there was really no stability in the top of the sleeve. And now he's added stays in there. You can see them right there. And the problem was when you put your axe in there, it would pull down and hang really weird without those stays on there because you were just leaning down the fabric with any kind of a weighted axe at all. But it fits a wildlife hatchet just perfect in there and it rides really nice with those stays. So I like that real well. Now there's plenty of room inside this pack. I've got a lot of stuff in here. I've got my repair kit, headlight and those type of things. I've got a roll of bank line. I have a full nine by nine D&D tarp and a full on hyperlight hammock system. 
I also have another piece of Foul Raven outerwear at the bottom. And then you've got some pockets on the inside of this thing as well. You've got a back pocket that can be adapted for a hydration bladder. And I've just got an emergency space blanket and a trash bag back there. The two pockets on the sides are big enough to put a 32 ounce water bottle in. They might be big enough for a 64 if you chose to go that way. But I've got my water bottle and cup in one side. And on the other side, I've just got odds and ends, pieces of cordage, a buff and things like that. And then the front side has got a zipper pocket on it that's mesh. And that mesh pocket's where I keep my field notebook, my compass, things that I might have to get to straight away. And then of course my fire kit and repair kit are on the very top of the pack. So this is easily enough room in this pack for what I would consider like a day pack and overnight, heck, even two nights, easy enough in this thing. And like I said, I've got an extra tarp in here because I've got a full nine by nine tarp as well as a Hennessy ultralight pack tarp in there as well, or ultralight backpackers hammock and tarp setup configuration. So I've got extra stuff in here that I really don't even need, especially just for one overnight. But it just gives me that bigger area of coverage if I'm going to set up a camp and it's going to be foul weather. And we've been getting a lot of rain, snow, rain, snow mix type stuff here in Ohio. So having that extra cover, I like. The other thing I like about Malk's packs is he's got a really nice carry handle on this thing. It's really heavy duty. It's nice and large. So even if you're wearing gloves, you can grab a hold of this thing. Makes it really convenient for hanging it off a tree if you want to or need to. And I like that. Uh, there's one more thing I really like about these packs is the keepers that he puts on the bottom of his straps right here in their Velcro so that when you fold your strap up because you don't want that big long strap hanging in your way basically you just fold that Velcro over the top and it holds that strap a little bit shorter so you don't have that big dangling strap hanging down below you so all in all you know I really really like Malcolm's packs made in the USA they're really good quality he stands behind them so I really just kind of wanted to give him a bump today, the Hidden Woodsman, and I've never done a video on his stuff or talked about his stuff much in videos, although I've used it off and on um, for quite a while now. Like I said, I had the original pack design like this the, in tan that he sent me, and I've used it quite a bit. So I wanted to, once he sent me this new one, I wanted to go ahead and get something out there on YouTube for you guys to be able to take a look at Malcolm's packs from Hidden Woodsman.